The following program is being brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check our additional show hosts and topics of interest, please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the following program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101. We're so happy you joined us this week. Over the next hour, you'll learn the tips, tricks, and vital information that will help you keep yourself confident and safe. Now, here's your host, Susan Bartlestone. I'm your host, Susan Bartlestone, and I'm so glad that you decided to tune in and hang out with me for a while because it's my great privilege to spend the next hour with you, helping you keep yourself safe. Now, this show is airing on New Year's Eve, and it's hard to believe that 2009 is just about over. It's been an amazing year for me, and doing this show for you has been a real gift. I got to meet so many incredible guests, some of whom have even become friends, and I learned so much about the triumph of the spirit under the most horrible circumstances imaginable. But 2010 is right around the corner. And I hope it's a year of revitalization for you, of the flesh if you're hurting, of the spirit if you're suffering. And if neither of those applies to you, I hope it's a year in which you appreciate your many blessings. Now, I know that no one wants to think about crime and violence on New Year's Eve. But hang in there with me, because I'm going to introduce you to three courageous people who want to tell you their stories tonight people who've been victims of terrible crimes like home invasion, kidnapping, or trauma to their children and community, but who went on to triumph and are now helping others do the same. These are stories of strength, determination, and guts. And I constructed tonight's show purposely to give you encouragement. So if you're listening on New Year's Eve or whenever, grab some champagne, lean back and relax, And let my guests inspire you so you can ring in the new year with that inspiration. And if you know someone who should be listening who might not be, why not send out a text message about us? Send an IM. Start tweeting if you're on Twitter. Anything so that they can join us too. First up, I want you to meet Ellen Snortland from Pasadena, California. After a thwarted burglary and attempted assault in her home, Her life was transformed. She went from being clueless about her personal power to becoming an internationally known advocate for women and girls' personal safety. She's the author of, among others, the classic book, Beauty Bites Beast, Awakening the Warrior Within Women and Girls. I think it was first published in 1997, so correct me if I'm wrong. She's a Goodwill Ambassador for the National Women's History Project and much, much more that she's going to tell you about herself. Ellen, welcome to Crime Prevention 101. Hi, thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for having a show like this. It's so important that women and girls know that they are endowed with certain human rights that um, includes keeping themselves safe from harm. So thank you so much for doing what you do. It's a true gift to me to do this show. Yeah, well, we appreciate it. Now, Ellen, let's go back to the beginning. Tell me what happened to you, the the attempted home invasion, assault, that changed your life. Well, um, it was um, one man. So uh, in California... At Los Angeles especially is so spread out that um, married couples frequently take two cars and meet for dinner and then go home. So we came home in two cars, my husband and I, uh, at midnight, and um, he drove in first, I drove in second, and he comes and tells me to stay in the car because he's noticed that the car, the, the door to the house is open and that he sees a rock and somebody's broken the window and somebody's in there. And I froze. 
Now, I should have said, get in the car, we're backing out of the driveway, we're going to the police station. But no, I froze, because as you and I both know, when you're under stress, you get adrenalized, and you don't think very clearly, because mm-hmm. adrenaline is not designed for intellect, it's designed to prepare you to you know, flee or fight. Well, he goes into the house. And then I'm sitting there and wondering what's happening to him. I can't stand it anymore. I go into the house to see if he's okay. And as I begin to cross the threshold, a man is coming up the basement stairs, holds up a knife, is ready to thrust it into my my heart. And I froze. And I heard a little voice say, do something, do it now, and I screamed at the top of my lungs, which, Susan, I have to tell you, is uh, an ear-shattering experience. The guy uh-huh. <laughs> the guy dropped the knife, grabbed his ears, and ran like hell. So that was a very, very good outcome. I wasn't hurt. I slumped to the ground. My husband was in the house. He was okay, but from that scream, he didn't know whether he was going to come and find me murdered or what. So what he found was a very angry woman sitting there going, I, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. I didn't, ah, I was just, you know, after an adrenaline dump, you're shaking and feel nauseous and all that. But I happened to sure. be a segment producer on a, a TV talk show at the time. And the next day I went in and going, <clears throat> I was going, why didn't I know what to do? Why was I so stupid? I, it, I just couldn't let it go. And I started asking everybody I knew, including men, what would you do if you were confronted, you know, with a man and a knife? Have you been prepared about that? Have, has anybody ever talked to you about what you should do in case there's a violent confrontation? And all the women said, absolutely not. I'm amazed you could even scream. Indeed. And that's very common. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the common nightmare for most people, and especially women, is that they'll freeze and not be able to say a peep. Yep. So, you know, I thought, well, that's very interesting. I am highly educated. I have a law degree. I've traveled all over the world. I've flown an ultralight uh, aircraft. I've rappelled off mountains. I'm just, I'm a highly privileged person. I'm a very experienced person. I'm a well-read person. And as I started to examine it, Susan, nobody had ever said to me, this is what you should do in case somebody gets violent. Uh-huh. And here we are surrounded by violent images in the media, in our so-called entertainment, and yet what is it that keeps us so ignorant? So I wrote Beauty Bites Beast exploring that um, and really <clears throat> examined the fallacies that have human women uh, human women. That's a uh, silly thing to say, isn't it? Uh, women. <laughs> human females, clueless, and expecting either all males to uh, behave themselves or for there always to be a male around to protect them. And I examine whether that's biological. If you know, right, I want to talk. I want to definitely talk about the book. This is this was. Um, had, this book has a special place in my heart, and I've, I actually wrote about that book years ago. But uh, I want to tell you, interestingly enough, you and I had a kind of a similar experience in a way, because uh, my journey also started uh, way back when I was 19 years old. I was I was uh, I was younger than you, but I got beaten up by a guy that I was going out with and I was trying to break off with. <sighs> And uh, while I while this whole thing was going on, and it wasn't the worst beating in the world, truly it was not, and I'm so fortunate for that. But while he was, uh, I was down on the ground, and he was kicking me, and he threw a lamp on me, and I was saying, if I knew what to do, I would wipe up the floor with this guy. You know, I just, I had this strange epiphany at the time, and I remember kind of pulling back from the situation. I said, why don't I know what to do? I would kill this guy. And I kind of, that was the first time that I got in touch with my inner warrior. And a couple of years later, I began taking martial arts and then self-defense, and then that's how my journey started. And I know you had a kind of similar, what did you do? Talk, talk about what you did after the, um, after the, uh, that, uh, that incident. Well, it, it, it started an exploration for me that I have, I'm still on. Which is and not only an exploration but a mission. It just 
hurts my heart that so many women and girls are hurt and needlessly hurt because they don't understand. Nobody has told them that they, too, are dangerous mammals, and um, it just doesn't make any sense at all. So you, you and I are both on the same journey, <clears throat> which is it does not make any sense in the scope of Mother Nature for Mother Nature to have selected human females to say, you of all creatures are going to be stupid and helpless. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. Uh, one of the things I love to talk about when I give speeches is if you see, if you're walking down the street and you see a growling dog, you don't check to see if it's a male or a female to decide if you're going to respect it or not. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. <laughs> oh, that's a girl dog. I don't have anything to be afraid of. Right. Yeah, how does that work? <laughs> I don't think now, so. Now, you went, to, went on to take self defense. Yes. Right? And- and being an instructor, where, where did you where did you train? I trained with um, Impact Personal Safety in Los Angeles, okay. and I still work with them. Uh, Lisa Gata is the the well Impact Personal Safety. I call my mothership, <laughs> and mm-hmm. Lisa Gata is the CEO of uh, Impact Personal Safety, which is now a five hundred one c three. And I'm on the board, and I'm also getting recertified to be an instructor. I had been really not instructing for a long time because I figured there are a lot of people that are much better instructors than I am in some ways, and I have a really big mouth, so I should take <laughs> you know, I should take my strength and do what I can. I kind of dub myself the um, spokesperson for uh, women's self defense. And Lovely. I actually trained in uh, model mugging, which was the predecessor yes. to Impact. Where I did trained, you train? Uh, I trained with Melissa Salt, who's oh, now okay. known with as Dr. Ruthless. I know you, Melissa. You yes. Know. Yes. So we're we're in the same family. Oh, indeed, we're cousins or something. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's so great. Yeah, that you... was one of my many teachers. And um, what's what's wonderful about that style is that you get the experience of what an attack is really like it's yeah. it's, it's a, a realistic fight situation with a padded attacker right right you get to strike full force and you get to experience your power and your strength and all of those other things yes that you well, want it, and teach yourself so that you don't freeze and as we as as we know and then i want everyone to, to hear part of what what ellen what you did in terms of yelling it's one of the most important things, techniques, self-defense techniques that you can learn. Yeah, yeah. Because if you can yell when you're frightened, then you can be trained so that you don't get scared. Yeah. So that you will be able to yell. That's the purpose of training. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's not even so much that you don't get scared. It's that the you're you're so acclimated to what it feels like to be scared, it doesn't freeze you. Exactly. Yeah. You don't yeah. freeze in fear and panic. You're able to work through the fear and still take action. Right. Right. Okay. Because as as uh, animals, which we are. We're always going to have the signals for when we're in danger, and thank goodness we can feel fear because then you can do something about it. And, but if you're not trained, I, I, I don't want to put an onus on people who aren't trained. People who aren't trained can also defend themselves, and the most important thing is your, your spirit and your indignation that anybody is trying to hurt you. Sure. So I don't want to ever have somebody feel like if they're not trained, they should just give up and not do anything. What I what I liken it to is like if, if I get, if I talk to you about driving a car, and I give you the principles. Here's what turns the car on. This is the brake. This stops it. This turns the real. You know, the wheel makes it go left and right. You're going to get a fairly decent idea of what driving a car is. Right. But you're going to feel much more confident if you actually get behind the wheel. Exactly. And that's what training is. Exactly. Now you are an international advocate for yes. self-defense training. Mm-hmm. Talk a little bit about some of the things that you're doing and what you're going to be doing and uh, tell people how to get in touch with you. Well, um, part of my whole self-defense arsenal has been humor, and one of the reasons I um, <laughs> got there is because whenever you have a last name like Snortland, if mm. you can't laugh about it, you're in really bad <laughs> So if you want to get in touch with me, just go to my website, which is Ellen, uh, which is snortland.com, land.com. Okay, it's land.com, snortland.com. 
<laughs> and it really is S N O R T L A N D. Snortland. Yes, it's a Norwegian name, and unfortunately, it sounded a lot better in Norway before we <laughs> came over here. Isn't it terrible? Can you can you imagine okay. going through life with a name like that? <laughs> Interesting. But I I would not let go of it. I've been married three times, and I never took uh, any of my husband's names because they were usually worse than my own, and I had uh, fought so many playground playground fights for my name, I wasn't going to let memorable. it go. It's memorable. So I know you do you do speaking about uh, about women warriorness. Mm-hmm. And, and one thing I felt really, really um, – Let's see, how do I put this? Um, I I got involved in the international scene when I went to the 1995 uh, UN Conference on Women in Beijing. And to a woman, whether she was there from a small village in Africa or she was a CEO at a major company, international company, I didn't meet one woman, woman in Beijing who wasn't concerned for her personal safety. Amazing. It just well, and Ellen, God, how the time the time goes. I want to thank you so much for being with me today. I've got more great stories coming up, and there's plenty of show left to tune in for. Make sure you check out snortland.com, and we will be right back. Talk, talk, talk. That's all we do is talk. Yeah! If you'd like to talk, call us toll-free right now at 1-866-472-5787. 1-866-472-5787. That's it. That's it. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.crimeprevention.com. Prevention101.com for more information. Streaming live, the leader in Internet Talk Radio, VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Susan would like to remind you that no absolutes exist in a crime scenario and no advice can possibly address every variable. Each situation should be evaluated individually and responded to in a way you instinctively judge best. It's Susan's aim on this show to provide you with the information and options that will help you make that instinctive assessment quickly and safely. And if you're already a survivor of the kind of crime we're talking about on the show today, or any other crime for that matter, please remember that there are no right or wrong responses in a criminal encounter and nothing that happened to you was your fault even if you think you used bad judgment in a situation and left yourself vulnerable that's never an excuse for a crime or for violence so please call yourself a survivor not a victim and understand that with time distance and the proper professional help you can put what happened into perspective and get on with your life if you'd like to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, send your comments to solutions at fightsafe.com, and Susan may address some of them on future shows. That email address again, solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101. Hi, Susan Bartlestone here. And if you're just tuning in, this is Crime Prevention 101. And if you missed... The websites that I give out on the show, don't worry, because I'm going to list all my guest websites from my blog site, CrimePrevention101.com, and from there you can share each and every show on your Facebook or Twitter page. You can email it to friends. You can post it on your uh, on your pages, and don't forget to follow me on Twitter and Facebook, because I would love to have you as a friend. I also, and before I bring on my next guest, I also want to just tell you very quickly about my friends at My Mobile Witness. And this is a free service that transforms your camera cell phone into a personal safety device. For example, if you're in a stalking situation, if you have an order of protection against someone, 
if you witness a crime happening, or if you just find yourself in any kind of situation that might be personal, potentially dangerous, you're going to want to check out My Mobile Witness. And special offers are available for colleges and universities. It's really a hugely important thing on campuses. Go to MyMobileWitness.com for more information. All right, next up I want you to meet Kim Estes from Bellevue, Washington. In 2006, a man came onto Kim's child's elementary school grounds, exposed himself, and tried to lure two young girls away. The man was eventually caught and convicted, and it was discovered that he'd been doing this for years and had hundreds of victims. Shortly after that incident, the children of a good friend of hers were unknowingly photographed by the infamous Jack McClellan. Their photos were sexually rated and posted on his How to Find Kids pedophile site. She was devastated and fed up and decided to form a, a nonprofit organization called Peace of Mind, which has been providing child safety workshops for parents, teachers, and child care providers around the Northwest. And they're going to be going nationwide in 2010. Welcome, Kim, to Crime Prevention 101. Well, thank you for asking me to join you today. My pleasure. Now, Kim, you said to me in your email, we refuse to be scared any longer. We refuse to let communities remain afraid to talk about safety. We wanted to educate parents so they could empower their kids. Talk a little bit about what happened to you, how it made you feel, and how it made you change your life. Well, you know, we were petrified immediately, of course. And, uh, you know, there's this, this saying that goes on with in, within the design community. It says that sometimes when you go into someone's home, their, their taste is very taste-specific. Um, and we found that personal safety was also very taste-specific um, in regards to what people talk to their children about in regard to safety, how they approached safety. Um, and a lot of it was based on what they saw in the media um, what they read about, maybe their personal experiences, um, their environment and to where they lived. Um, our situation was we lived in a, you know, comfortable suburban neighborhood. We had a very uh, false sense of security. And mm -hmm. as a result of that, we did not make safety conversations a priority with our families and with our fellow adults and community members. So when this incident happened, we, we kind of shoved us into the spotlight of, wow, we've not only been teaching the wrong stuff, we've not been teaching it frequently enough for our children. And so, you know, the incident happened with my children's school. And then, like I said, you know, in my email, just a very few short months later, a very good friend had, it, you know, an even scarier incident happened at her daughter's school. And so we really just, you know, being resourceful parents, being fed up, and also being fueled by some fe fear, you know, mm -hmm. that we needed to address this issue. And so we sought out safety experts throughout the United States. Um, many of them graciously met with us. We flew out to be trained, and we gathered as much information as we could to help us go back to our community and start really talking about personal safety with families, with community members, with caregivers, and with any adult who wanted to learn about making a safer environment for our communities. And that's how we got started. So we were accidental activists. Uh, unfortunately, that's how I can't tell you how many stories like that I've heard after yes. that terrible thing happened. Um, I'm, I'm going to talk. I want to talk a lot about peace of mind, but I just have to go back. This uh, this Jack McClellan thing. That just I remember this uh, this name. I mean, this was a this is a website, and, and and parents should know about these kind of things. There are websites like this around, right? Where they they photograph kids and yeah, you know, it, I, I it's it's a it's a dirty underbelly, and um, it's one that was very frightening. Uh, we didn't know existed. Uh, you know, the, we quickly found out that the laws really are not there to protect children. There's a lot of freedom of speech issues involved. There's a lot of just anonymity on the, on the Internet, and it made 
prosecuting or charging or even finding these people very, very difficult. Um, so, you know, initially for, for a, just a heartbeat, we thought, oh, we're going to change the laws, but we realized that that was going to be, that could be a process that would take years and years and years and still may never happen. And we realize where the real power lies is within prevention. Uh, we, I think we, we lost a, we lost a bit of your <laughs> a oh. bit of your um, it was it, you were talking about a um, we're talking about the, um, the finding these pedophiles. Right. Um, they're very difficult to to find. Um, there 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 are a lot of them are based outside of the country. Uh, there are some based within the, within the United States, but a lot are, are outside of the United States. So it makes finding them, tracking them, prosecuting them very difficult. And a lot of free speech laws protect them, mm-hmm. even though what you would think is an atrocious thing that they're doing, you know, photographing and rating and telling people how to find these children, um, it, it's not illegal. So the power to protect is is falling within the prevention. We need to talk about prevention um, with our families and try to let the stuff not happen in the first place. Great. Now, talk about talk about peace of mind. Tell, talk about some of the workshops that you do and kind of the way that you. I, I know you you built, you, call, you call it non scary, non threatening. Talk about how that concept is. Well, you know, parents often don't know what to talk about with their kids or they're they're afraid that by bringing the subject up they're going to frighten their children uh they kind of treat it as a one-time conversation that they need to have or they don't know where to start and so that's where we kind of you know bring parents to the table in these workshops we meet with churches we train caregivers we train homeowners associations I mean, just anywhere where there's adults who care about the children in their community. And we just give them incredibly user-friendly tools to start talking about kids to safety. And we recommend parents of children starting at the age of two. And I think the most surprising thing when parents leave our workshops is that they realize that it that safety is fun, prevention is, is empowering, mm-hmm. and that there are really simple steps uh, that you can take in talking to your kids on a daily basis. Uh, just a couple of quick tips that uh, that I will tell you that we do is one of the things we recommend with like parents with very young children is starting to help kids point out a safe mom with kids in the grocery store. It's okay. a fun game. Kids love it. Um, and what you're doing is introducing your children to the concept uh, as they get separated from you, whether it's in a store or in an event, that they know what to do. And this gives the child some confidence so that if they are separated from the, you or their caregiver at that moment, that they can actively seek out a safe adult and get reunited with you. And so by introducing the concept of finding a safe mom with children in a store, gets them comfortable mm-hmm. and they know what to do. So that's like a, an easy game with the, a small child you can play. And they, they have a blast. And a lot of times they're very funny about it. They'll point to somebody that's, you know, Clearly not, you know, they'll point to the shelf or they'll point to a dog or something like that. That's not a safe mom with kids. And you can make it fun. Um, something you can do with older children is do a daily debriefing with your kid. What was the best part of your day? What was the worst part I of your day? That. And Meditation. this, the, it, it, it's, it's fabulous. It, it is truly, and people are like, how does that have to do with safety? And the thing that we try to remind parents of is that children, when they are presented with a problem, don't always present it to you in a tidy package. Mm-hmm. They, 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 and they may not know how to articulate something that's going on, whether it's bullying or somebody is threatening them or they've been abused. They don't know how to approach it. So by giving a child a platform or a safe place to come talk to you every day, they know it's coming. I know my mom or I know my teacher is going to ask me, what was the best part or the worst part of your day? They're sharing with you, and they may give you little glimpses of what's going on. Um, and you might be able to pick up from those conversations when something isn't right. And kids, when and there is and something... And you're, you're actually teaching the parents to be sensitive to that. Exactly. Well. Yes. And, how can, and how know, can people get a hold of you, Kim? Well, the best place to reach us is at our website. We have a ton of information on there, and that's www.pomwa.org. 
org. It stands for, it's an acronym for Peace of Mind Washington. Um, we have contact information through our email, and there's lots of safety tips on there to help parents get started. And uh, you will go anywhere to do these workshops, correct? Correct. Right. We, right. We've got we're, we have things set up nationwide this year. So that was P O M W A dot org. Peace of Mind Washington. Yes. Dot org. All right. That is fantastic, Kim. I I thank you so much for being here on the show with me today. Well, thank if you. There, if there's any other way that I can help you out, I want you to let me know because that's also what I'm here to do. I when we come back, you. when we come back, I've got more amazing stories for you. Don't even blink. Ask the experts. Call toll-free right now, 1-866-472-5787. Hello? And ask our all-star team to answer your questions. That's 1-866-472-5787. Thank you for calling. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.crimeprevention.com. Prevention101.com for more information. The Internet's number one talk station. Number one talk station. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. This is Crime Prevention 101. Thanks for tuning in today. And don't forget to check out my blog site, CrimePrevention101.com, where you can look at what we've been talking about, get more information about show topics. I'm going to have pictures of my guests and link to them. And you know what? You can also get in my mailing list from there, or you can email directly to me. So make sure you check it out. Now, last but not least on the show today, I want you to meet Michelle Renee from, I think it's Encinitas, California. Michelle went from being an abused runaway teen, at times actually homeless, to becoming an award-winning banking executive and branch manager of a large bank. At age 35, she had a life-shattering experience when she and her then 7-year-old daughter were kidnapped, held hostage for 14 hours, taped with explosives, and ultimately forced to rob the bank that she managed in order to save their lives. She wrote a book about the experience called Held Hostage, The True Story of a Mother and Daughter's Kidnapping, and that book was made into a Lifetime Movie Network uh, movie that premiered this past July, and Michelle actually served as the consultant and producer for that movie. She's now a motivational speaker, a consultant, an entrepreneur, and many more things, and she and her daughter, Bria, are family advocates for the National Child Traumatic Stress Network. Hello, Michelle. Hello. Good morning. Welcome to Crime Prevention 101. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on your show. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here, and I, and I can't wait to hear your story. Now, you said in, in an email to me that um, it was important in your book to depict not only the violent kidnapping and uh, the brutal judicial process for victims and witnesses, but also to show post-tra- uh, post-trauma recovery, inner strength, the critical nature of treatment, and uh, how you want to uh, inspire people's lives. Let's go back to the beginning. Talk about your life at the, up to that point, what happened, how, how these, this changed your life. 
well, you know, when they broke down the door to my house and, you know, came in, you know, swap style, it was three men dressed in black, masks, guns, and they held us hostage for 14 hours. And during that 14 hours, I literally felt like I needed to prepare to die, and that's exactly what I was doing. And 14 hours, if you think about that, that's a really long time to, to think about your life and to think about your successes, how far you've come, but it's a long time to think about, you know, some things that you want to change if you make it out of a situation like that alive. What would you do differently? Who would you forgive? Who would you ask for forgiveness? What would you do differently moving forward, and how do you choose, you know, to really, truly, um, you know, survive and thrive after something like this? So the choice for me was it's really time to heal my life right now, and face my, my past and my childhood, which for me was filled with um, fear, uh, physical abuse, emotional abuse. Uh, there was a lot of domestic violence in my home. My mom would numb herself to sort of check out, so it wasn't like I could go to my dad. He was violent, and my mom was, you know, emotionally unavailable. And it was, you know, my brothers and sisters and I, we kind of just had each other, and and we still do to this day. But I had to figure out... Um, you know, how to heal my life and what I needed to do if I made it out of that situation alive differently, more positive, more self-loving, and begin to set boundaries in my life. Now, did they actually catch these guys? This is a tremendous way to go for a robbery. I, I'm, I was actually stunned when I read this because, and, and I'm, I'm amazed that you made it out alive because you were certainly able to identify them. What actually happened in, uh, what was the aftermath of this? You know, I'm, I'm, I'm stunned I made it out alive, too, that we made it out alive, too. But the aftermath was, um, you know, finding out that they'd been stalking us for about two months um, was pretty horrifying. I mean, they, they said some things to me that they had saw me do and that they had followed me. You know, and that's something that's important for your listeners to understand is that I was so busy with my life being a single mom and running a bank and, and being a businesswoman. I was really oblivious to what was going on around me. I was not paying attention at all. And that's something I've definitely changed, uh, you know, today, obviously. But in the aftermath, uh, I did recognize during the night uh, one of the guys, his voice, his stature, um, his eyes through his mask as somebody who had come into uh, my banking center pretending to be a potential client. And uh, ah. they ended up being captured and, and eventually uh, being sentenced to three consecutive life sentences plus 64 years. So, now, during that 14 hours, they remained masked? They did. Oh, good. That may be what saved you. You know, that, that could, I think so. because if, And, you know, when I recognized him, when I, when I spun around and, you know, we didn't have any privacy and they followed me into the bathroom and I spun around and just instinctively out of habit, I went to flip on the light switch and he didn't stop me. And I turned around and I looked at this person and I... I just knew that I knew that I knew that I recognized this person as somebody who had been into my banking center. And I had to keep telling myself, you can't let them know that you know anything. Mm -hmm. You can't give it away that you recognize him because it will definitely be over, you know? Yeah. that uh, what, they, what they were doing actually was, was, you know, scoping out the bank, and then they picked you for, you know, definitely for sure. But... I don't know how anyone would have known that. You know, it really is very. You're you're in that position, and you can't be in in bank robbers' heads. Usually, I don't think they go to that length to you know, uh, to kidnap somebody and uh, do all the things that they did. Well, it's now, let's important. let's talk. I'm sorry. Oh, I I was going to say the statistics uh, related to this kind of a a bank robbery, kidnapping of employees, and things like that is much higher than what people are aware of. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, Okay, now this I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, it's happening more and more, and, and you know, banks are not stepping up in terms of crime prevention and, and robbery prevention and changing their policies, procedures, training um, to talk to people about what the risk of the job is in terms of home invasion, kidnappings, and what's going on. It's, it's happening a lot more than what the public is aware of, and obviously banks don't want people to know, and and they do need to change their policies and procedures and better protect their employees from uh, 
this kind of bank robbery. Well, I see an, uh, I see another avenue of entrepreneurship here for you. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I'm, I'm always not kidding, thinking, Susan. I'm always thinking. Yeah, well, that's your, that was one of your your uh, bio things, and uh, the, why don't you and I talk about that a little bit sometime off air? Sure. But let, let's go back. Tell me how you now you, coming from the difficulties in the childhood to the trauma of of this incident. How did you put the pieces back together? You know what? It's really it's about choice for me, and it's always been about choice for me. And when I chose to run away, I wasn't just running away because I wanted to be a wild teen or anything. I wanted to get away from an abusive situation. And unfortunately, my first, you know, my first boyfriend was, I went straight into another abusive situation, just like so many young girls and women do. But I recognized then that this is never going to happen to me again. I am going to break the cycle and I'm going to I'm going to do whatever it takes and that's exactly what I did and became I said I want a professional job. I'm not going to become a statistic and I think you really have to just tell yourself I deserve better than this. You have to love yourself enough to know and understand that you deserve a life of 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 joy and not abuse. And and that's exactly what happened. I I just made a choice that I wasn't going to settle for that kind of a situation ever again and I haven't since coming into this situation with this with this abuse and this uh, violent trauma uh, and the assault on myself and my daughter, it was different because something that was happening to my daughter, I couldn't protect her, I couldn't save her from them. I, and all the trauma from my dad and being abused, it all came surfacing sure. and, and I hadn't dealt, I hadn't really, really dealt with it on a deep level until the kidnapping happened. And when they broke down the door, I mean, they really broke open Pandora's box, and and post-traumatic stress started setting in, and I started really, really spiraling into post-trauma, and I didn't know what was happening to me, and I didn't know if I would ever be normal again, and I felt for the first time I really need help. Um, And I ended up um, going into the Chadwick Center in San Diego, and it's uh, a trauma center for children and families at Rady Children's Hospital, and they took my daughter there to videotape her testimony uh, for the FBI. And while I was there, the lead trauma therapist came out and said, are you okay? And I just looked at her and I said, no, I'm not okay. I'm having nightmares. I'm having hallucinations. I still hear their voices. I can still smell them. I, my daughter's hearing the swishing of their nylon pants walking mm-hmm. around. I mean, we're not okay. And it took two and a half years of therapy for us to finally finally get to a point where we we were able to say we're okay we're we're gonna we can do this we're gonna make it and we're gonna do something positive with this now you're you are uh, both your how do you pronounce your daughter's name is it bria 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 you and bria are both and how old is bria now she's now 16 wow i have a teenager (laughs) almost (laughs) driving yeah, good. And you are both family advocates for the National Child Traumatic Stress Network. Uh, talk a little about that. The National Child Traumatic Stress Network is really designed to educate people um, about post-traumatic stress disorder when it, when it, as it relates to the youth uh, population that have survived uh, being abused and have survived community violence, family violence, uh, those types of things. Um, they experience it at a level that people don't understand. And like my daughter's school, you know, no one understood that she was going through post-trauma. And, you know, they do a lockdown situation at her school as a drill. They don't understand why my daughter is turning ghost white and feels sick to her stomach and can't concentrate and can't function in school. It's because she's having an episode of post-traumatic stress disorder where she was just triggered. And so we've uh, really had to educate her teachers and the schools. And and that's what the Child Traumatic Stress Network is all about, educating the community about what PTSD is uh, specifically as it relates to the youth community. Um, Do you want to give out a website for uh, for that as well? NCT, National Child Traumatic Stress Disorder dot org. (laughs) <laughs> NCTSN.org, okay. that's what it is. Okay. So it's kind of a mouthful. Um, okay. And then I actually started Rock to Stop Violence, and that's an annual event that's coming up where we, where we um, you know, invite the youth to come out to a rock and roll benefit concert with, 
with uh, music, art, and fashion, and it's all to get people to stand united for nonviolence. And I know that you are a motivational speaker. I am. And consultant and serial entrepreneur. (laughs) (laughs) You want to give out your website so that people can find it. Yeah, please log on to michelle-renee.com. You can sign up for my newsletter. It's an inspirational newsletter. It comes out with, you know, tips and quotes, and I interview uh, what I call Dream Big Women uh, for my Women Who Dream Big Spotlight, and, you know, you can learn more about other women doing amazing things. But please log on to my website. All the info is there, Facebook, Twitter, all that. So it's michelle-renee.com. And where can they get Held Hostage, the true story of a mother and daughter's kidnapping? That, that the movie sure, was based ahead. on. Same, they, same website? They can go to my website if they want a signed copy. I can go ahead and send out an autographed copy for a family member or a friend. They can go ahead and order it and tell me who they want that autograph to. So they can do it that way through my website. Or they can go to Amazon.com or Barnes & Noble or any of the big booksellers. Okay, I'm going to put a link to it on my crimeprevention101.com uh, website as also. Thank you. How? What was the reaction to the movie? It aired this past July? Yeah, it aired this past July, and it just sold to uh, Canada, so it's going to be shown all over Canada. And I uh, just finished uh, filming another project for Japanese television, and it got four out of five stars. The reaction has been fantastic. Julie Benz, who is the star of the, the hot show Dexter on Showtime, she actually played me, and uh, mm, yeah. a great young gal named Natasha Callis played my daughter. We were able to be on set and uh, really be a big part of, um, you know, the the movie having the, the real core heart of, of, a, of a positive message that I wanted to, to be in the film is definitely there. So anytime you get a chance to watch it on Lifetime, definitely tune in. Oh, fantastic. I think I will make sure I set my VCR for that. Michelle Renee, thank you so much for being on Crime Prevention 101. If there's anything that I can do to help out what you're doing in the future, just let me know, okay? I will, Susan, and same right back to you. I'd love to, you know, meet you in person someday and Indeed. and see what All we right, can do let's, together. Let's talk. Okay. All right, this is Crime Prevention 101. I've got a couple of more stories for you coming up, so do not touch that mouse. Ask the experts. Call toll-free right now, 1-866-472-5787. Hello? And ask our all-star team to answer your questions. That's 1-866-472-5787. Thank you for calling. VoiceAmerica.com. After more than 17 years' experience teaching safety skills to thousands of women and men, crime prevention and personal safety expert Susan Bartlestone concluded that by thinking and responding quickly, ideally within 20 seconds, potentially violent criminal encounters can be prevented. Using techniques from many different disciplines and illustrated by 60 real-life examples and success stories, Susan shows how it's done in her new book, Think Fast and Prevent a Violent Crime, How to Respond to Danger in 20 Seconds or Less. Check out www.crimeprevention.com. Prevention101.com for more information. Stimulating talk it gets those synapses in the brain firing really fast. All the time. The number one internet talk station where your opinion counts. VoiceAmerica.com. You're listening to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. We invite you to share your stories, tips, or suggestions for topics you'd like us to cover, and Susan will address some of these on future shows. Send your story or idea to solutions at fightsafe.com. That email address again is solutions at fightsafe.com. Now, back to Crime Prevention 101 with Susan Bartlestone. Welcome back. This is Susan Bartlestone. And I just want to remind you that Crime Prevention 101 is also available on iTunes so that you don't even have to be at your computer to listen. Uh, We're coming down to the close of the show. And I want to tell you that, uh, God, I can't believe how wonderful the stories are today. To to me, it's so empowering to hear about the stories of people going through these things and and turning around and, and triumphing. And when I put out the call for uh, 
people who wanted to tell their story. I got inundated, and I got so many that I couldn't put everybody on the show. And there were three that kind of stuck out for me, three or four that stuck out for me, and I wanted to um, just read a couple of the stories that even I couldn't have them on the, the phone uh, on the show to, uh, with you. The first one is, uh, came from a woman named Angela Daffron, and she goes, I was not the victim of a crime, but my friend Jody Sonderholm was killed by her stalker nearly three years ago, and since then I have worked to change stalking laws and increase awareness around the uh, crime of stalking. So far, the laws in Kansas, which is where Jody was killed, and New Mexico, where I lived until recently, when I was actually forced to relocate to escape my own stalker, uh, are uh, she's working. She said she's working on changing the laws, particularly there, and she's now launching uh, an official website called Jody's Voice to continue to raise stalking awareness. And you can uh, take a look at that. It's www.jodysvoice.org, and that's J-O-D-I-S-V-O-I-C-E dot org. Very interesting. And we definitely I've done a number of shows on stalking. We certainly need more stalking awareness information, and stalking laws have got to be changed. Uh, next, I got an email from Donna Anderson. And she says, I was defrauded by my ex-husband for more than $227,000. My ex-husband, I learned far too late, was a sociopath. Realizing that people need to be educated about this, I built lovefraud.com, which launched in 2005. I've been told it's the most helpful site on the Internet for information about sociopaths. She also has a uh, love fraud blog with more than 600 articles, and it has evolved into a healing community to help people become, uh, help people recover from sociopaths. And you can find uh, her link uh, to her website and her story, www.lovefraud.com. And her name is Donna Anderson, A-N-D-E-R-S-E-N. Don't worry, I'm going to put a link to that as well. And also, lastly, I've got, uh, I've got another one, Denise Richardson. She goes, my name is Denise Richardson, and I was notified uh, you were looking for crime victims. I am a victim-turned-consumer advocate who has worked to turn my life experiences into something I, that could prevent others from falling victim to a similar crime. She had her credit stolen. And uh, she she said it cost me more than just money. It cost me energy and and sapped life for me. So she's got a a website called Give Me Back My Credit. It's www.givemebackmycredit.com. So if you've had that experience, you might want to check her out. Don't worry, she's going to be linked. Well, that's a wrap for now. But never fear, you and I will be doing this again next week in 2010 when I'll have more stories that demand to be told, more hot crime topics, and lots of tips and resources for you. It would be a crime not to listen, so stay tuned and stay safe. And Happy New Year, everybody! We hope you got some useful information and inspiration this week on Crime Prevention 101. Susan Bartlestone invites you to join us again next Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific at 8 p.m. Eastern Time here on Voice America. If you want to learn more about Susan's guest, sign up for her newsletter, or find out about upcoming teleseminars and workshops, go to www.crimeprevention101.com today. Have a great week and a safe week. Thanks again for listening to the preceding program brought to you on the Voice America Variety Channel. For more information about our network and to check out additional show hosts and topics of interest, 
please visit voiceamericavariety.com. The Voice America Talk Radio Network is the worldwide leader in live Internet talk radio. Visit voiceamerica.com. The views and ideas expressed on the preceding program are strictly those of the host or guests and do not necessarily reflect the views and ideas held by the Voice America Talk Radio Network, its staff, and management.